Michigan State Spartans Dynasty. In the first episode, we took over the Michigan State Spartans. And through six games, it's been a rocky start. We've got a record of three and three, but we're looking at some solid recruits. The stud four-star gem, Jermaine Missy, just committed to Minnesota, which is a huge bummer. But we did get the gem athlete, Andrew Foss, a six foot five, potential wide receiver with 91 speed and 94 jumping, but potentially could be a different position. We haven't decided that yet. And we've got our sights set on a few more really good recruits, like four-star Enrique Vallejo, a stud corner who's leaning towards Michigan State right now. We're also looking at three-star center Tay Bickley, who's leaning towards Michigan State, Javier Boyce in the same boat. Jalen Hoover is leaning Michigan State with 93 speed and 96 acceleration. And probably my favorite prospect right now, in a tight race with Penn State and the University of Kentucky. This is an 88 speed, 88 acceleration, four star gem. So a technical five star middle linebacker recruit for the Spartans. We've sent everything we can, a conference spotlight, friends and family. Now we just gotta wait. Josh Westbrooks, the four star right tackle. Looks like he may go Iowa State. And we've already signed a few wide receivers like Oscar Bello and Emmanuel Labinho. We'll keep our eyes peeled, but we're looking to get a Big Ten win right here against Ohio. We do have a few visits scheduled and a quick refresher on our roster. We've got standout tight end Jack Velling, a junior. Standout halfback Nate Carter, also a junior. And Aiden Childs, our current quarterback, only a sophomore. Now, at the end of this season, our whole corner room is graduating for the most part. Chance Rucker and Jeremiah Hughes are going to be left kind of on an island. So that's why I'm recruiting heavily on corners right now. And I wanted to get some speed and depth in the wide receiver room. Montori Foster is our best guy, but he's about to graduate. And then we're sitting here with 74, 72, 69. It doesn't look good. Taking a look at Aiden Childs, though, he does not like the playing style at Michigan State. I can understand that, but he does have star dev. I really do not want Aiden Childs to leave in the off season. So hopefully we can adjust our playing style to suit him. Regardless, we're taking on Iowa here and keep in mind each episode of this dynasty will be half of a season. This is episode two. Looking to hopefully clutch up a bowl game. I think the national championship is already out of reach. I shouldn't say that, but it would be tough. Also, today's sponsor is DoorDash, and I use it almost every day, so this is an awesome one. DoorDash is one of my favorite delivery apps. Whether that's groceries from the store or food from one of my favorite spots, DoorDash is always hooking me up. DoorDash is your door to more. I use this all the time when I'm really busy and recording, so I'm really excited to partner with them. Download the DoorDash app now to get almost anything delivered. You must be 21 and up to order alcohol, and it's only available in certain markets. Also, I have a code for you. It's MMG50. That'll get you 50% off up to $10 on your order. So there's a link in the top of the description. Don't forget that code MMG50 for 50% off up to $10. And enjoy the rest of the video. And there's Sparty running out. Home game against the Hawkeyes. In real life last year, we lost this game. It was a punt fest, but we did lose this game. So I'm hoping we can take one here. My dream is that one day EA will face scan me into the audience for a Michigan State game. Can you imagine if it was me out there getting hyped for the Sparty? Spartans. They really should do that. They should get Matthew McConaughey for Texas. They should throw me in here for Sparty. Maybe Tom Brady for Michigan. I don't know. I'll play the key moments here for the Spartans in this opening game. It's third and seven. We are in field goal range. Let's see how we look on this first play here. Clean enough pocket. We get away from the D tackle. Aiden Childs. What do you think about the playing style now, son? I thought about rebuilding the Spartans in one episode, but I love this program too much to do that. I want to earn it. And here's Jack Velling taking it in for a touchdown. Spartans are the first to strike. It's a beautiful day in East Lansing, Michigan, baby. It's a beautiful day for football. First and goal, Iowa's got it up and close. Cade McNamara, former Michigan QB. I'd love beating anybody who was ever on Michigan. Come on. What did I miss here in this sim? Hey, check down Central. That's third and goal. Spencer here, bagged up, fumble. Bogle gets the fumble. And the return? Somebody fast is gonna come into, yep, I knew it. Oh, and he's so tired. Bogle ran out of steam. Bogle, we're gonna need to put you into some conditioning. That was a monster play, but he couldn't cap it off. Maybe Aiden Childs can get another touchdown. Now I do wonder if I get Aiden Childs like significant rushing touchdowns, you think he'll change his tune about our playing style or is that playbook dependent? Right here, I'm looking at Nate Carter, but it's it's all Aiden Childs today, baby. That was just too easy. Back on third down, it's 14-7. to seven. The Spartans are looking to get a big victory here. Nate Carter 
is so open, unbelievably open, and nobody on Iowa can catch him. 21-7, defense is doing everything for me right now. I'm not even, I'm hardly being asked to do a thing. Uh-oh, big screamer through the middle. Aiden Childs goes down. I tell you what, though, this halfback corner route is really difficult to guard. They're in man coverage there. They can guard it, though. We're just going to hand this ball off and send this into half. Here's a handoff, Nate Carter, unless Nate Carter wants to go crazy. It's 15 to 31 in the fourth quarter. We can pretty much put this game away, fourth and four. If Iowa wants a miracle, it's gotta start with this. And it does. Wait, stop. Hey, tight end university or what? Stop! It's 21 to 31 here. I'm not an onside return. This is actually really, really hard to recover if you're not an onside return, but we got it. Hey, they don't call them hands team for nothing. And Michigan State's gonna take this first game of today's episode, 31 to 21. Aiden Childs, you gotta be excited, right? I don't want you leaving this program. Player of the game, Chris Bogle had six sacks. Chris Bogle should have had a defensive touchdown too, but we haven't been practicing conditioning very much as Spartans. Oh my God, he had six sacks? That might be a program record. Okay, the single game national sack record was just tied today. Western Michigan's Amir Ishmael got six sacks in 2006. It's too bad they don't give you like a tied record because you kind of got to beat it, but it has to be a Michigan State record. <laughs> Chris Bogle just got the MSU single game sack record. There's some legends. There are some MSU legends on here. Brian Lewerke, Drew Stanton, Eric Allen. I don't think anybody he's beating Barry Sanders national season rushing yard. Oh my God, 2,600 stop. Bailey Zappi on here twice. The Michigan State career sack record is only 16. Bogle, <laughs> Bogle could easily do this. That puts Bogle at 10 sacks on the season. He is a senior though. This is the number one recruit. He's the four-star gem. That's a five-star. Look at the recruits we just got in that Iowa week. Vallejo, Bickley, Boyce, Hoover, and Gideon. Those were the number one guys I wanted. They all just committed. That's gonna free up a ton of hours too. The Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. I mean, he also wins National Defensive Player of the Week. There should be no question about that. Right after that is undefeated Michigan for the Paul Bunyan. Before we do that, though, we got to recheck recruiting now that ours are freed up after so many of those big signings. We can look back at the prospect list and see who else we can focus our attention on. Ooh, Ramon Moong is a gem. And Chris Bogle is about to retire. I always do that. Indiana Hoosiers are ranked. They're 6-1. Yikes. All right, we'll schedule a visit for week 13 against Purdue. I'm a little scared of Indiana. Alan Talib, a slow, mm, four-star right tackle. Gem D tackle, Tyrone Madu. He already likes Michigan State. Mitch Troop, gem left guard. And I'll schedule him a visit for that Purdue game as well. Oh, just kidding. I don't know what he likes. Hope you want a trophy tour, buddy. Just trying to identify a few more gems or just really solid looking players We're running out of hours here but let's keep them on the radar this is in the big house too um there's a saying as a michigan state fan though and that saying is even if you lose every single game in the season but you beat michigan it was an awesome season granted we have a winning record right now but i do want to win this game oh the big house i tell you what the big house is the biggest stadium in football it houses the most people of any stadium pro or college but there's a reason for that you can barely see over anybody last game i went to the big house i mean you better be six foot seven and if you're six foot seven you're clapping the person behind you we're just gonna play the key moments in this game in child starts the game cold i can't see a single route I, I i don't even know oh i see b actually this is an rpo screen and i accidentally handed the ball off second and six we're gonna go to a handoff and get a solid push brandon tullis is in where is nate carter why on, do not tell me that nate Carter got hurt. Oh my God, I think Nate Carter got hurt. How did I not notice that? There must have been no pop-up notifying me. It must have happened in this Iowa game. But Aiden Childs is gonna bend the corner and get some really solid yards here. Where is Nate Carter? Nate Carter is the backbone of this team. I love you, Brandon Tullis. You ain't Nate Carter. I'm gonna throw this one into Brandon Tullis. And he's a big boy. That's a hefty halfback. I cannot believe this. I do have injuries on. I wanted this to be a very realistic rebuild. I didn't think we'd be losing Nate Carter so early. Aiden Child's gonna step up, slide it down. First and 10, a bit of play action. My routes are setting up so late. Did not get the correct hot route on Jack Velling. But we do get a clear out of Paracheck, the backup tight end. Gonna go for a run down here on the goal line. Well, not quite. We're almost there. 
Brandon Tullis. Brandon Tullis ain't done yet. Second and five. We're going to the left side. These blocks look good. Tullis, third and one. Going inside zone to Brandon Tullis. There's a lot of star D tackles in there. Let's see if we've got enough of a push. Wait just a minute. Walked into the big house and scored a touchdown on our opening drive. Michigan's in a similar scenario. That's Donovan Edwards back there. Alex Orgy at quarterback. He's real fast. Ooh, I'm trying to put bodies on Edwards, but he's breaking tackles. And we stuff this. Second and goal. It's a handoff right up the middle. We've got bodies. Jordan Turner, I need one more big stop out of you. Unless this is a pass. Third and goal. It's an RPO or she keeps it. Third and nine in the second quarter. I can't see a damn thing. But we've got the lead, gentlemen. Good blocks. Really good blocks. I'm able to get around this. Is that why it is? McKinney Ware. But where's my team? Where are all the starters? McKinney Ware's catching a touchdown. Michigan scores a touchdown. MSU misses their field goal. It's 14 to 10. Lots of goal line today. Let's see if Michigan brought something this time. First and goal. There's a handoff. Donovan Edwards. There's way too much room in the middle. Hey, we did it once before, boys. Can we do it again? It's got to be a handoff. Oh, it's a left side. I don't like that, but I'm there. Donovan Edwards fought forward. Got maybe an additional yard there. Third and goal. Same scenario again, stuffed again. Michigan State's goal line defense and they're going for it on fourth and goal. One more stop, boys. One more stop. Michigan State D-line. Motion to the right side. It's a handoff up the middle. Stop! Sparty holds them, but we're in a skip. Oh no, the sim got me out of safety territory. It's first and 10, the clock is ticking. McKinney Ware, we are onto our third string running back. Second and eight, we're going jet sweep here. One more run here, can we secure this game? <gasps> Great blocks, McKinney Ware broke a tackle. We're literally on our third running back right now. This is such a scary play call here. We're going play action jailbreak screen. Okay, just, just slide. I'm so glad I didn't throw that. That could have been a pick six. Probably should have thrown the ball away, but getting sacked keeps the clock running. Second and 19, they got everybody up here. They know what we're doing. It's not a mystery, but McKinney Ware, <laughs> stop it. Michigan just burnt their last time out. If we can pick this up, oh my God, I just got bulldozed on, but Childs is just a little bit faster than him. Oh my God, don't you dare. I went out of bounds though. That was kind of stupid. I don't get the clock burn here. Okay, well, we need some great coverage on this. Eckley, we got a great punter. Ooh, that's a dot. It's gonna fair catch it right at the 28. Michigan's got no timeouts to score this, and I'm just gonna watch. I feel like I've done a lot for Michigan State already. I, I need to let the boys step up and close this game out. Four point lead, no timeouts, Michigan. Orgy's passing. That could be caught in bounds. That is the best case scenario for us. That could not have gone better. Second and eight, Vogel. Come on, Vogel, get home, buddy. Donovan Edwards catch. Once again, Michigan is sawing the clock off here. I mean, they got five yards out of it, but they've lost 30 seconds. Third and five, nothing huge, nothing huge. Orgy's gonna step up, he is fast. He gets the ball away. It's the ball game, we get a stop right here. We win this game, victory formation, it's over. For the Paul Bunyan Trophy, fourth and five. Colston Loveland in motion, we gotta be scared of him. He's sweeping out to the right, Orgy. Looking, caught, is that a first? It's not! Donovan Edwards is just short. And Aiden Childs and the Spartans, without Nate Carter, are in victory formation. I gotta look at the injury report. The Paul Bunyan is coming back to East Lansing after a 14 to 10 victory, and my defense stepped up and ended that ball game. That's amazing. We're gonna be ranked after this. We just beat the best team in the nation. On the back of Brandon Tullis and McKinney Ware. Second and third string running backs, the only touchdowns for us today. That's crazy. Nate Carter broke his thumb. He's out for one more week. We are just fine. We are gonna be okay, boys. Wow, that's like the most favorable injury that I could get. Huge week versus Michigan. We gotta be ranked now. I have to assume. I mean, even if we've got three losses, we just beat the best team in the nation, right? We are ranked 24th in the nation. I don't know how to change this playing style thing. I think we might lose Aiden Giles. How do I change that? Is it scheme and playbook? Okay, so we've been running Michigan State pro style offense. I'm gonna switch this offense to, I don't know, I wanna try something out. I'm gonna go to Auburn's playbook. People have told me a good thing about Auburn's playbook. It's spread. I'm also gonna edit my coach so that his offensive play style is Auburn spread. Yeah, it is. We'll see if that does anything for us with Aiden Childs, cause I'd really like to keep him. Another gem wide receiver, six foot five, 94 speed. We could get a lot of wide receivers on, this, on the roster. Here's a gem scrambler QB, but he only has 82 speed. That's not very fast for a scrambler, but he's a gem and we may not have Aiden Childs, so let's grab him. We could have two Labinhos on this team. We've got Emmanuel Labinho, his brother Dion, 
is a gem free safe. We'll give them an offer, send the house, see what's going on there. All right, recruits are looking good. We continue to be where we need to be. Josh Westbrooks, strongly considering Michigan State now. The hard sell, looking good on him. If we could secure a four-star right tackle as well, he's close. Oh my goodness, he commits. I wonder if that means we beat Indiana. Another four-star commit, Josh Westbrooks. Didn't look like we were gonna get him. And playing style still has Aiden Childs at a high risk of transfer. So it doesn't look like changing the playbook did anything for him. Two-star right guard commit, Tua Huang, three-star wide receiver. We're 15th in the nation right now. So because the Indiana win, six and three, four and two, in the Big Ten, taking on the Fighting Illini. I do have some coach skills to upgrade. I think I'm going to dump more points into that recruiter tree. Just want to close this out. Let's go quarterbacks, D-line, O-line, halfbacks, O-line, halfbacks. Almost maxing out the recruiter tree at this point. Yikes. Our fourth loss of the season coming to Illinois then. And this game against Purdue is big. I have a visit scheduled here. Ernest Shermer commits, but he wasn't the visit. Aiden Childs, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Looks like we probably got a win against Purdue. If he threw for 367, four and no interceptions. And our final game of the season against Rutgers here, we're ranked at seven and four. And in this first season, really good work. We're not gonna get a Big Ten championship because the Big Ten is tough. Uh, five and three in the conference. It looks like it'll be Michigan against Ohio State, maybe USC can squeak in there if somebody loses a big game here. We landed every four-star available to us. Other than Gregory Gay, I'd like to get Gay. He has no interest in Michigan State. Is there any chance you can land a prospect like this? I'm kind of interested in trying. <laughs> what happens if I send the house to this dude? Do I pop up? Looks like he wants to be in the SEC. We got the brothers, boys. Emmanuel and Dion are both Spartans. We win the game against Rutgers, finish the season eight and four. We were three and three going into today. So that's amazing. Uh, also, this is so interesting. So Gregory Gay, we weren't even on his radar. Now we're third. Still Alabama, Texas A&M in front of us, but if we could just casually land a four-star center, be pretty insane. Looks really good too. 90 strength coming out of high school. The Scrambler QB commits, so that's kind of like a decent backup option if we lose Aiden Childs due to our playing style. Aiden Childs' risk of transfer has decreased, so I guess that's good. Maybe because we're winning games. Miami's Cameron Ward wins a 2024 Heisman. And it's the Music City Bowl. We've got a really tough matchup. Take it on Texas, yikes. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough game. So no playoffs for us, but we got a really cool bowl game. Before we go anywhere, let's use these coach skill points. Looks like we got a ton leading through these bowl games. We can finish out D-line, O-line, running game, and quarterbacks. All that's left is the secondary and kickers and punters. To get elite recruiter though, you have to sign two top five recruiting classes. And I don't think we're very close to that. It's also kind of funny to view my job offers. <laughs> These are my offers, are you joking? I just took the Spartans to eight and four. We're about to play Texas in the Music City Bowl. And I could go to ECU, Memphis, Southern, I'm offended, genuinely offended. All right, let's go for the Music City Bowl, baby. Texas got a big overall advantage on us. We're gonna rock the all black alternates for this game. See if we can come out on top. Get out there, boys. Sparty's in town. You know he's geeked up. <laughs> oh God, there's so many freaks on that team. Isaiah Bond, Quinn Ewers. It's a half and half stadium. Looks like there might be a little bit more Texas than Spartans. McKinney Ware, got his work cut out for him. Look at Coach Maher. It's gonna be a moments game once again. They'll let us start on offense. And it's so beautiful to see Nate Carter in the backfield. So glad. That defense is clamps. Aiden Childs is lucky that we didn't get sacked there. Second and 10, going with a casual handoff to Nate Carter. Oh, gets around that linebacker, and I'm spinning like a dummy. Read option here for Aiden Childs. I don't think there's much of a read. You just gotta take the first down, and luckily, we get it. I gotta stay strong in the pocket. Jack Velling's gonna clear. I just don't know how much more he can get. Maybe, you know, maybe investing in a good punter means something. Eckley is really good. Uh-oh. He feels this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Punter tackle. Ooh, and early on, Texas. Fourth and one. No field goals for Texas. I'm on Matthews here. It is a handoff, and it's a stop. The Spartans get a stop on fourth and one. Nice push. Uh, maybe RB? Maybe. I don't know, boys. Third and 14. Need something big here. Oh my God, they leave Nate Carter. What are they doing? Huge defensive laps for Texas. We got a touchdown we probably should not have gotten. Now it's third and four, and I'm trusting Nate Carter one more time. See if we can get some blocks here. Good. Texas, what was he doing? First and goal. Jack Velling corner out. Oh, 
Maybe make this more manageable. Maybe punch it in the end zone. Get all the way to the edge. Nate Carter. Nate Carter. Nate Carter's in! The worst hit stick possible into the end zone. It's 14-0 and we're back on offense. What is happening in the second half of the season? The Spartans came alive. Second and seven. Play action. Velling. Corner. Too much sauce. Ooh, blitz off that corner. Leaves Marsh. Spin! Why are we so nasty right now? Why are we unbelievable? And my defense, I mean, I'm not even getting a moment on defense because they're just clamping. Just kidding. Texas just scored 14 unanswered. Oh, Matthews is so gassed. He's so gassed. There's a handoff. He can't make the tackle. Stop. They got a pass here. I'm on Tatum. I see the deep routes. Nothing is setting up. Nothing at all. And offense just be going three and out every time because we're back on defense now. First and 10, game on the line. There's a little RPO. Quinn Ewers is 156 and a touchdown. This is a slow game for him. Michigan State's defense putting up a real tough fight. Second and six, motions over Bond. Handoff to the running back, and I missed with Matthews. Motions out the tight end. It's an RPO. Another good RPO. Yikes, I hate Isaiah Bond. Dude, just seeing the ball anywhere near him scares me. Texas is kind of milking the clock. Running back is moderately open. Ewers finds a man on his feet. What? Do I own the game? I'm in the middle of one. I don't know what just happened, but Texas is not in the end zone yet and we need a blitz. Oh no, please don't jet sweep it. I will cry. It's a handoff. It's still a handoff. It's still a handoff. Bogle. Second and goal. It's a pass. Halfback. No. We can't make it that easy. It's now 21 to 21. Texas has scored 21 points unanswered, but it's Michigan State with the ball in the final minute 25. And you're going to single cup. That was a horrible ball! Childs! Oh my god, I saw a linebacker on Velling. I thought it was free. Look at this ball. Velling could have never caught that. He laid out, put his body on the line, and it's still picked. Listen, it was a tight window, but wow. And I expected a handoff. Nothing. Oh no. Texas is all the way down there. We've got three timeouts. Maybe we try and hold him to a field goal. This is a horrible series of events. First and goal. There's the handoff. Oh, I went low. Just walked it in, no issues. And all of a sudden, we're back to the same spot. We just were 28 points unanswered, Michigan State. This is completely unacceptable. First and 10. Inside zone to the right side. Nate Carter is going to take a yard. Not super worried about the clock with three timeouts. Let's make sure we're calling the right play every time. There's Nate Carter. They keep leaving that. Okay, that throw was perfectly yellow. That was a, that's supposed to be a perfect throw. That's the best accuracy I can get on that. I have no idea what just happened. Luckily, Montori Foster is going to clutch up for us right there by getting open on the slant. Aiden Childs got a little bit of room up the middle. Probably should have thrown that, but that's okay. Because if I had thrown it, I might have had a chance to get out of bounds. Regardless, we get the timeout off. Velling right in the middle. Tough catch. Makes it. Let's not burn the timeout. Getting out of the pocket with Aiden Childs. Maybe could have hit my running back. We got eight seconds. I should have used my timeout. I should have used my timeout earlier. Let's see if they leave Nate Carter on this again. They've left him a few different times on this. First and 10. The out route is there. It's caught by Marsh and he's out of bounds. Second and goal with four seconds. Oh, we got to get it in right now, boys. Or this game's going to end. Second and goal. Biggest play. Nate Carter. Caught! Caught! Michigan State! Nate Carter, I'm so glad you're back. Why does it say onside kick? Did it, my coach just fucking go for... There is no way that that just happened. You know why that happened, boys? I set my offensive aggressiveness to 70 instead of 50. So we went for two. Frankly, I love the go for two play call. The fact that I don't play that is crazy. That they take me out and sim that. Oh my God, no, I didn't just, I didn't just throw that to lose by one here. Absolute heartbreaker to end the season. Texas scores 14 in the fourth quarter. We score six to lose, 28. A heartbreaker to end our season, but we really did close out that season so strong. And we signed almost all of the recruits I want. Emmanuel Gideon being the best one, I believe. So it's a great season. It's time for the off season. We got to convince Aiden Childs to stay. And we've got to see how National Signing Day goes too. We'll also be able to 
see how our players improve in the offseason, our younger guys. We've also just improved to a three and a half star program. So Michigan State, starting out as three star, we're now three and a half star, which is really exciting to see. After this season, Tanner Miller, Jonathan Kim, our stud kicker, Montori Foster, Angelo Gross, Ed Woods, Jordan Turner, Chris Bogle, Dallas Fincher, all out of here. So how did season one go? Aiden Childs, 3,000 yards, 26 and eight, not bad at all. Nate Carter, 755 and nine is an awesome season. And Bogle never got another sack. How? How did you get six against Iowa and then quite literally not get a sack? That's actually... Uh, so Jack Vellings potentially going to the NFL. His persuasion chance is low. Uh-oh. Let's try and persuade him. He's decided to stay. Yes. Tally wants to leave. He has not been persuaded. Brantley wants to leave. He has decided to stay. Satchel I'd like to keep. He's, damn, not been persuaded. So... We got Jack Velling to stay, that's huge. Tanner Miller, Jonathan Kim, Foster, Gross, Woods, Turner, Bogle, Lowry, all just graduated. And interestingly, I don't see Aiden Childs. Like, I don't even have the option to persuade him. I don't know what the deal is there. Transfer Portal has a nasty guard in there. I'm gonna throw him on our board. Oh my God, Matthew Golden, Isaiah Bond, all in the portal. Isaiah Bond's in the transfer portal? Let's see if we can't get this stud left guard, dude. 95 strength. He's a junior though. Let's schedule him a visit. Give him a tour of the trophies. Tanner Miller was taken in the seventh round. Have fun, Tanner. You will be missed. Well, Thomas, dude, this junior in the transfer portal really likes us. Dude, a four-star left guard with 95 strength would be an insane instant addition. Ooh, we also don't have the deal breaker on Coach Prestige for Gregory Gay. So it looks like we're not getting gay at all. What a bummer. And Rimac goes to Penn State. Darn it. I honestly, we threw everything at him that we could. I even gave him a tour of our trophy room completely blind and that's a plus grade and he's interested in it so i legitimately did everything i could to get this guy i just couldn't get. all right now we have potential position changes these are the two athletes we got there's a scrambler qb john dragos 91 speed 88 excel what are your throw accuracies actually really good john dragos really fast great accuracies i'm gonna redshirt him for sure and then here's andrew foss the 6'5 wide receiver gotta make you a wide receiver dude he's a 69 overall as a safety he's a 67 as a wide receiver. Honestly, I drafted a lot of good. Oh, do we make him a tight end? Dude, he's six foot five and he's, this would be such a fast tight end. Yo, I'm making Andrew Foss a tight end. Vertical threat, tight end, Andrew Foss. Oh my God, he's so fast. A 91 speed, 88 Excel tight end. I mean, how bad is your blocking? His blocking's horrendous. This guy is not blocking a soul. You are pass catcher. That is your job. Damn, pretty cool though that you can do that. And then Dragos has got to be a quarterback. Yeah, he's pretty much exclusively a scrambler quarterback, and that's what he's going to be. After training Jack Velling as a senior, thanks for coming back, buddy. He's now an 89. Ramil's an 88. Nate Carter's an 88. Aiden Child's now an 86. Damn. Spartans are an 85 overall now. Looking a lot better. I'm going to max out recruiter skill tree. Well, not entirely. I won't do kicker punter because I, I don't see enough value in that. But I'm gonna put the rest of my points in Tactician. We got a ton of points in the off season. Tactician's fun, it's easy to unlock, and it just gives you boosts during games. Um, these are really nice though. I think offensive line is really important for when you play like Alabama, Georgia, etc. Boost to run and lead block, pass block, impact block. Yeah, I'm gonna max out the O-line tree and Tactician's looking really good right now. First year was a winning year. I'm really excited about it. The last thing I do before I end this episode, I wanna see just how good those guys we recruited are. A lot of them are very high starting overalls. Tay Bickley's a 72. Emmanuel Gideon is 74 out the gates. Vallejo is 74. Josh Westbrooks is a 76 as a freshman. Boyce is a 70. We added so much speed to this team through our recruiting. Tua Huang, 96 speed wide receiver. Chance Rucker's got 96 speed. Oscar Bello, 95. Labinho, 95. Shermer, 94. Hakeem Jackson, 94. It's really exciting. Now, what I do want to see out of my best freshmen, I'm just interested in their dev traits. Enrique Vallejo, the four-star corner, star dev. Star dev is huge. It is almost the best. Not quite, but almost the best. Emmanuel Gideon, impact dev trait, four star. This dude is already so unbelievably good. He's maxed out power. He's maxed out quickness. He just needs work on run stopping and pass coverage. I'm not so worried about pass rush. I think Gideon will probably be an instant starter. I don't think I'm going to redshirt him, but I got to determine the rest of these guys. Justin Denson is a redshirt freshman, 82 overall corner. That's... 
Great red shirt right there. Josh Westbrook's the highest overall player that we uh, actually recruited. 78 overall as a freshman. All right, let's take a look at the depth chart. Child's the obvious starter. Nate Carter, the obvious starter. Wide receivers. Marsh, Jalen Smith, Antonio Gates. Hello. Definitely got a red shirt some of these uh, freshman wide receivers. I think I'm gonna red shirt Andrew Foss as well. That's the 67 overall athlete that I made a tight end. Cause Jack Fowling's out of here next year. Would love to get that speed demon in in year three. I mean, we still have Ramil who's an 88 overall. I should probably red shirt Westbrooks as well. We have Dellinger at center. I could red shirt Bickley. My D line is definitely the weakest point on this team. We got Devery Poe. Oh, I'm gonna redshirt Gideon. I thought I was gonna start him, but I'll redshirt him. I think most of these guys we got are gonna get redshirted. Bickley, Shermer, Foss, Kreider, Labinho, Boyce, Gideon, Vallejo, Huang, Oscar Bello, Jalen Hoover, Josh Westbrooks. Oh my God, this dude's getting redshirted. He's a 76. He's gonna be such a freak. John Dragos gets the redshirt as well. And, and that's perfect. We just picked up so many good kids. They're all getting redshirted this season. And I'll save our prospect board going into year two for next episode. Insane offseason, insane close to the season, and a one-point loss in our bowl game is a bummer. But I'm so excited for what this team has in store. We've got a prime Aiden Childs, a prime Nate Carter. We're off to a great start, gentlemen. Hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.